Right. Hello everybody, thank you very much all for coming to the Zimmer Stewart Gallery tonight. Um, we're very lucky tonight because not only we've got Gary's lovely paintings, we've got a poetry reading as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Gary. Uh, right, all the work in the um, gallery tonight in these two rooms are stuff that I've done very, very recently, all very new stuff. And um, all the poems I'm going to read now are brand new as well, I've never read them before. But they're in this little um, collection that I'm going to put together called Forever Awkward, which I, I make lots of work and um, I write lots of poems. And I always make these little photocopy fanzines as well. I don't know what you call them, little chapbooks, I suppose. Yeah. Marathon. I tore the pocket of my jacket. When I felt for my cigarette lighter, it was down in the lining. There's a hole in my trouser pocket. When I took off my boots, I found some small change in one of them. I'd walked across town earlier, but it was difficult. The streets were blocked because of a running marathon. Why don't they do it in a park or in the countryside where they won't bother anyone? If it isn't one, as it's cyclists or old-fashioned cars. I had two bottles of Lucasade for breakfast. I felt good. Until I came across the running fools. I don't know if I read this. should read this one. Sorry. Yeah, read it. She said, you don't really love me, it's all pretend. I said, of course I love you. Everything I've done has surely proved the fact. She said, you don't care anymore. I said, I haven't stopped caring, even when you act weird. <laughs> In the pub, they played good songs. Bob Dylan, David Bowie, Lou Reed, Iggy Pop. Stuff that still resonates. I smelt pizza cooking and bit all my fingernails. This exchange of texts reminded me of many times in the past. I can't resist answering back. The universe. Today, I'm thinking of the universe. Not very deeply, I might add. I'm on a train and didn't bring anything to read. I picture a Malteser hovering in the middle of an empty room. <laughs> <laughs> On the train, there was a woman talking into her mobile phone. I didn't understand what she was saying. It was in Norwegian. But she was talking fast and loud. The man opposite was also talking into his phone, but he was speaking Arabic. Loudly again, probably to compete with a Norwegian woman. In the seat next to me was an English girl shouting at somebody on her mobile. There was an argument at the other end of the carriage. Carriage. Carriage? <laughs> carriage. Somebody's personal stereo was hissing and clattering. The closing door started beeping. The conductor was making an announcement over the harsh, crackly tannoy. All that was missing was a baby crying and a dog barking. <laughs> Anyway, tides. I parked the car on the seafront and walked down the shingle beach in the dark. I stood at the edge of the sea and pissed into the rolling waves. The sea that reached right across to the rest of the world. My piss could end up on the coast of any old country. But as I don't know anything about tides and ocean streams, I guess it could just as likely end up messing my own shoes the next time. <laughs> I was going to meet you to ask you to take me back. I'm a complete idiot. Oh. Right, there's two poems about people I really admire, then one final one. What more could I do to calm the anxiety? I was all fretted and drunk with excitement, alone in a strange city, a wide-eyed college boy staying in an attic room with a window in the roof, I drunk beer in canal side pubs, brown and smoke stained. It rained all week. I only had two pairs of socks and holes in my shoes. I walked through the springtime city streets with unclean teeth and stubble, head lowered against the drizzle. But when I faced up to those Van Gogh paintings in the museum, all my angst and concerns somersaulted and spun around. I felt sick and wonderful. I knew the world was a wonderful and frightening place. Right, Bob Dylan, first time around. 
The new year had begun with birds falling out the sky and thousands of fish dead in a river, floods and landslides, prices rising and panic in your throat, slicks of vomit on New Year's Eve, girls in party dresses crying in shop doorways, kebabs skidding on the pavements, desperate snogging at midnight. All I wanted to make was to make that last train. Get home, find everybody asleep, make a coffee, maybe a little whiskey, put the music on. It always sounds better that way. I clearly, clearly remember the first time I heard Bob Dylan singing. I was a young boy, home alone, having a sick day from school. My dad had a stack of records in his radiogram. They weren't in any sleeves. I flipped through the heavy black discs like giant magic sweets. I picked one because of its orange label. When I put the needle down on its edge, it sizzled like a frying pan. But like a ghost in the fog, this voice appeared, singing strange words. Mr. Tambourine Man. A guitar twinkled and chimed out from the gloomy plastic. I burst into tears, not understanding what I was hearing. It was beautiful. It was some kind of magic. I sobbed. It was a first kiss punching into my mouth and into my stomach, a flame or a flower bursting in my chest. I was hooked. Right, so two very quick finish shows and then, yeah, you can get your checkbooks out. Um, there were some pigeons roosting in the eaves of the station while I waited for my connecting train. Earlier from the train, I'd seen a fox yawning in somebody's back garden, bold and beautiful. This afternoon, I'd watched a film. <coughs> Several people got shot, <coughs> but I was most upset when a horse got hit and died. <coughs> First thing this morning, I took Darlene for a run along the beach. She got excited, jumping in the rock pools and chasing her ball. As wind whipped across the grey ocean, dark clouds scrambled and shifted low in the sky. I'd also spoken to my dad on the phone. I said a few things that needed to be said for a long time. Darlene skidded over the wet sand, oblivious to all this human nonsense. Right, and this is the final one for my wife Teresa. We used to listen to the Walker Brothers, No Regrets. It was the only good song on that album. We were in St Michael's Place. First we were at 33. Then we moved across the road to number 3, opposite the wonderful Red Church. We'd go to the Rockingham Inn, or the Oriental, and Putnam's, where they kept the Christmas decorations up all year round. They all have different names now. We also listened to Soft Cell and the Psychedelic Furs, but our favourite was Ghost Town by The Specials. It was often on the jukebox. At home we put on other stuff, some jazz, Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, eating powdered minestrone soup and smoking roll-ups over the Christmas holidays in front of a one-bar electric fire before the girls were born. We were a little shy with each other, and you thought my drawing could be better. You encouraged me to go to college and helped me put my folder together. You wrote me letters in your delicate handwriting with sketches and notes in the margins. I kept them. You were always right. And all those people in the house that were funny to begin with eventually made us leave. Love is the remedy. After nearly 30 years, it leaps around, shooting us in the foot and making the world more agreeable, under different skies, down Western Road, and along the salt spray seafront, all the way to Beckett Road, and the place we know where it might be good. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs>